There we go. Hi, how is everybody doing tonight? Sorry, I'm running late. <laughs> Testing out my mic, make sure it's working. Wait just a second, see if some other folks want to join us. I see a couple of you there. Hi, welcome. I hope you're all having a good day today. It's Tuesday, right? <laughs> it's always good to remember, what is today? <laughs> All right, so I thought tonight we'll just do just kind of a feel good flow. Why not? You know, uh, so this that that point where we just kind of need something to make us feel good. So let's just do a feel good flow tonight. Um, at the end of our practice, I, I'm going to connect it back to uh, the chant that I like to use a lot, Sanskrit, uh, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. So we'll bring that into our closing um, part of our um, practice tonight. So go ahead and, it's a little crooked here, maybe just the way I'm looking at it, but go ahead and come back to your mat and we'll get started. Hi everybody, I see a few of you. So yeah, feel free to send us some, uh, some you know, the, the hearts, the thumbs up and all that so you can tell that you are listening, that you can hear me okay. Um, also, we love sun water, we love to hear the comments, so feel free to comment away. Invite your friends to come practice as well. All right, let's come on. I'm going to come back to our mat and we'll get started. So go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Maybe you wiggle out your shoulders. <sighs> take a couple of breaths. Inhale and exhale. <sighs> and then settle into your seat. You can let your hands rest on your knees or you can take them into your lap or you can even do palms together into namaste. Take a moment just to close your eyes and settle into your practice tonight. Connecting with your breath. Finding some stillness, perhaps from your busy day, or maybe not so busy day, whatever the case. Just taking a moment to be still before your practice it helps to prepare yourself for your yoga tonight. So let's bring our palms together at our heart and we'll chant Om three times. So feel free to chant along if you like. Take a breath in, exhale it all the way out, and then inhale for Om. Om. Inhale again. Om. And another breath in. Om. So Om is a Sanskrit word, sound actually vibration and it's meant to essentially vibrate through us so let's interlace our fingers draw our arms up draw your ribs in take a big stretch Good. and then open your arms out from your shoulders like you're going to touch the wall on either side of you Good. cross your right arm over your left Bring your palms together, lift your elbows, take a stretch through your shoulders. And then let's open the arms again, stretch it out wide. Let's do the other side. Good, and release. Go ahead and take the soles of your feet together. 
you bring your hands down to your shins. You're going to inhale, lift your chest, let your head gently lift back. So you're not throwing your head back, but instead tilting your chin up towards the ceiling. And then from the lowest part of your belly, start to roll in. Bring your chin into your chest, round your back behind. Keep your arms straight. You're actually going to press against your arms. Get some stretch into your back. And then inhale, let's pull through the chest again, open and lift. And then round your back, arms straight. Good, and then lift nice and tall. All right, tuck your left leg in, bring your right leg out to the side. Bring your hands on either side of your rib cage. Pull your ribs back and give yourself an easy twist. And so not too, too strong at this point. We're just kind of getting warmed up. But you're going to twist so that your chest is over your extended leg. And then walk yourself out. Use your hands to help stretch out. Pull your ribs back and go ahead and round your back slightly here. And then walking yourself back in, turn your chest back towards the center, slide your right arm out to the side, lift your left arm up, and then come over for a side stretch. And so you're working your chest up towards the ceiling, ribs in, and just use your left arm to help you open the whole left side of your body. Nice, and let's come back in through the center. Now walk yourself forward. Make sure that you're not over straightening your right knee. So keep a little softness there. Take an easy bow in here. Ribs roll up back, rolls back behind you. And reaching the crown of your head forward. And then use your hands to help lift you up. Bring your feet back together. Take an inhale, and on your exhale, take one more forward fold. Now with an inhale, rise back up. All right, let's extend the left leg out. Tuck your right leg in. Bring your hands on either side of your left leg. Pull your ribs back. Use your fingers to grip the floor and turn your chest over your left leg. And then walk yourself over that leg, lining up the center of your chest with your leg the best that you can. And then coming back up, taking your right arm up, and then over side stretch. Turning your chest up towards the ceiling, and then keeping your right hip down onto the floor. And then lifting up, come on through the center, walk yourself out. And then lifting yourself back up to seated, taking your legs straight out in front of you, flex your toes, reach your arms up, inhale and reach forward. Doesn't matter what you grab, maybe it's the floor, maybe it's your shin, maybe it's your feet. Wherever you are, be there and don't worry about anything else. Pull your ribs back and lower down. So the one thing we don't ever really want to do in yoga is measure ourselves by how good our poses are. Because really there's no such thing as a perfect pose. I know, you know, sometimes magazines and things will show us, you know, this is the perfect pose or this is the yoga body or whatever, but really that's not yoga. So there's no perfect pose. There's no end game, if you will, in yoga, at least in my mind. I think of it as even if I master a pose I've been working on for a really long time, there's always another pose to go to. There's always another level, if you will, another variation of the pose. So there's no finish, which I think is amazing about yoga. There's no finish. You just do it forever. <laughs> and then circle your arms. Let's inhale, lift up. 
and then exhale and lower down. And yoga is for everybody. And we hear that a lot, everybody, meaning no matter your age, no matter your flexibility, whatever, you can all, anybody can do yoga. You can always verify and <laughs> vary the poses and change what you're doing to make the practice be beneficial for you. And rise on up. Go ahead and bend your knees. Take your hands back behind you. So a little bit further back than your shoulders. Feet are separated hip distance apart. Push down through your heels and you're gonna lift yourself up for a table. So lift your hips high enough that you're making a table out of your body. If you can, try to get your knees, your hips, and your shoulders in about the same plane so that you feel like a table here. And then lower back down. We're gonna do that again to give your body just a break for a moment. I find that if I spin my arms away from each other, it gives me a really good bicep stretch. So let's try that again. So we're gonna inhale, lift up. Just rotate your arms away from each other. See if you can stretch into your bicep. Good, lower your hips to the floor and then come all the way down onto your back. Give your knees a squeeze in and rock side to side. So again, this practice is all about feel good. So this pose often feels really good. <laughs> so just rock side to side. Give yourself some love here. And then lift your feet straight up to the ceiling. Turn your toes back. You're gonna slide your hands up for as high as you can reach. Again, it doesn't matter how high it is for you, but you find a good secure place. And then gently work your legs toward you. And then bending your knees, start to rock forward and back. Massaging your spine. And then rock all the way up. Send your legs behind you and come into a table. So knees underneath your hips and hands under your shoulders. Lift up for cow, cat pose, sorry, and reach up. Now come into cow pose. Drop your belly, uh, arch your back. Let's do that one more time. Inhale up for cat. And then we'll go the other way for cow. Good, draw your hips back to your heels. Walk your fingertips forward and find child's pose. Sinking down into the earth. Feeling the full weight of your body come down onto your legs. And then with an inhale, roll yourself up. You're going to come all the way forward down onto your belly. Squeeze your legs together. Take your elbows back and your hands are right along the side of your rib cage. Let's inhale for a cobra. So it's your first one, so you don't have to lift super high here. I want you to feel your spine work though. So the top of your head lifts, and then feel the very top of your head. And then mentally just walk down your spine all the way to your tailbone, and then all the way down to your big toes. So you feel that energetic connection from the very top of your head all the way down to your toes. Legs are together, and then soften. Head comes back towards the mat. Let's try that again. So try not to use your hands. Your hands are there to support you, but your back should do the work. So we're gonna pull our low belly up to support our spine, squeeze our legs together, and then inhale, rise up into Bhujangasana, Cobra. Good, and soften. Use your hands to roll yourself back into your child's pose. Come all the way back. You can walk your hands a little closer so you can get your 
full weight on top of your legs. And then rising up into your cat pose again. Separate your knees, take your hands under your shoulders, spine up towards the ceiling. You melt through to cow pose, arching your back. And then one more time, cat pose. Stay with cat pose, but just walk your hands just maybe a half an inch forward. Turn your toes, stay with cat pose. And like there's a string attached to your back, start to lift up into your downward dog. So keep lifting up until you find your pose. Now experiment with your legs. Bend one knee, bend the other knee. And then rock to the outside edge of your right foot and the inside edge of your left foot and sway your hips way over to the right. And then sway over to the other side. Swing your hips way over to the left. And let's do that again because it feels awesome. Come on over to the side, stretch. And then over to the other side. And then back into the center. So we're gonna roll up onto our toes, lift our heels, and then bring your heels back towards the floor, stretching through the backs of your legs. Inhale again, up onto your toes, roll back. Good, now find downward dog, meaning settle into your pose. So adjust your feet, your hands, spread your fingers nice and wide, and press your hands into the ground. So really push into the floor to reach your hips back and apart. So there's a sense of broadening in your hips. A little bit of softness in your knees, Ribs up into your body. Good. Now use the power of your toes to shift forward into your plank pose. So when you come forward, your shoulders should come just slightly in front of your wrist. Let's test that again. So come on back into downward facing dog. Find your downward dog. It should feel really nice here. I like to keep a little bit of space underneath my heels so they're not flat on the ground. Knees are soft. And again, there's a sense that your upper inner thighs are reaching back and apart. Ribs up into your body, shoulders up. And then externally rotating your arms so away from each other so you feel your shoulder blades on your back. Now use your toes to push forward. Find your plank pose, a nice long line. Bending your elbows so they point back towards your feet. Now you start to feel your tricep muscles work. Slow, lower to the floor, all the way down. Untuck your toes, squeeze your legs together. Inhale, rise up and find your cobra. So if you wanna come higher this time, that's fine. Just don't bring your shoulders with you. Keep them down, elbows in. And release. Push off the floor, downward facing dog. We'll reach back through your legs, press your hands into the ground. Good, let's find a short downward dog. So walk your feet a little closer in. Softness in your knees, push your hands back. Again, let's really feel the stretch in our hamstrings. So from the top where your hamstring connects all the way down the back of your leg, you should feel a great stretch. <sighs> let's move this into a twist. So take your left hand and you're gonna reach under your body and grab the outside of your right ankle. Push your right hand into the floor and spin and look underneath your right arm. And for the extra stretch, really reach your hips back. Push your right hand into the ground and get that stretch. All right, let's go to the other side. So come back to center. Take your right arm underneath you, cross to the outside of the left ankle. Look underneath the arm, push your left hand into the floor. When you really push that left hand down, you should get a great stretch in your left hip as you reach back. Good. 
and then come back into all fours. Walk your feet to the top of your mat. Fold your arms at your elbows and put your head right in between your arms. Hang over for a moment, knees soft. Lift your tailbone up. And relax your hands down to the ground. Now engage your belly, so pull it up towards your spine, soften your knees, and begin to roll yourself up. Super slow. And then arms reach up to the sky, big stretch up. Interlace your fingers. Let's bring our feet together. So we'll squeeze your legs together so you feel the inner thighs connect. Good, ribs in. Come over to the right side. Take your half moon stretch. Ah, big opening through the whole left side of your body. Keep reaching your hands and chin off your chest. All right, we're going to drop the right arm towards the thigh, and then reach that left arm a little deeper. And let's come back up. Ah, that feels great. Pull your ribs in. Let's do the other side. Come on over and stir it. Again, we're just feel good vibes tonight letting our practice open us up create space in our bodies our minds drop the left arm and take a little deeper stretch good inhale oh come on back up to the top take your feet out wide turn your toes out you're gonna plie down so come down through the middle Hold it right there, breathe. So it's like your heels have magnets and they're attracted to each other. So you're gently dragging your heels without moving your feet towards each other. Good, and then bring your hands top of your thighs. Drop your right shoulder and look over your left. And then the other side. And then come back up through the center. Release those hands and then stay low. Bring your arms up, working the legs. Drop your right hand to the top of your right thigh and then stretch over sideways. Keep your legs strong. If you need to, straighten them and come out of it. But if you can hold on to it, stay with me. And let's come back up through center. Drop your left hand to the top of the left thigh. Reach the right arm and come on over for a side stretch. And then back up. Open both arms wide. Now straighten the legs. Oh, yeah. All right. Turn your right toes straight out. Left toes turn out. Soften the right knee. Triangle pose. We're going to extend out and then drop down. Fingertips to your shin. Left arm reaches up. Trikonasana. Triangle pose. Now keep working your right hip back lengthening the bottom rib cage. Good, with an inhale, reach up as if somebody's giving you help out of that pose. Swivel your feet to the other side. We'll take Trikonasana on the left side. Take an inhale, reach your left hand out, drop it to your shin, and come over for your pose. Good, so take your right hand to the top of your ribs and gently move your rib cage down. So again, we tend to kind of arch in this pose and we lift our ribs up. But I want you to think about lengthening both sides of your ribs. So if I have my ribs way up here, if I use my fingers just to, not really pushing my ribs, but just to guide my ribs down, then I can feel that length on both sides. Shoulders up and back. So my shoulder blades come onto your back, our back. Ooh, tongue tied tonight. And then inhale, rise up out of your pose. Good, step to the top of your mat. Bring your hands to your heart. Pause. And inhale, reach your arms up, take a big stretch. 
Exhale, fold all the way down, forward fold. Good, so shift the weight forward in your feet. Heels feel a little bit lighter, top of your head points to the ground. Give your head a yes shake and a no shake. And, and then halfway lift. Fingers on your shins, a good place. You can leave them on the floor, but I find the shins a great place to lengthen out your spine. Pull your ribs up. Then feel your outer glute muscles hugging towards your tailbone. So you're actively working those muscles. Knees soft, long spine. And then fold, hands to the floor. Take two steps back into your downward facing dog. Need more steps? Take more steps, but just find downward dog. Press your hands into the floor, reach your hips back. Good, shift forward into your plank pose. Shoulders in front of your wrists, ribs up. Long line, top of your head, back to your heels. Bend your elbows so they point back towards your feet. Either lower all the way to the floor or come halfway into Chaturanga Dandasana. If you're in Chaturanga, use your toes to push you forward into upward dog. Thighs never come to the floor in that transition. If you're like, yeah, I'm not doing that, come to the floor and stay with your cobra. Again, it's your practice. Belly up and in, roll back, downward facing dog. Don't worry, we're gonna do that again. Uh, it feels nice, move your body. Right, use your toes, shift forward, find your plank pose. Exhale either to the floor or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, lower, push off the ground, downward dog. One combination is not better than the other. They just feel different in our bodies and we are in different places in our practice. So which one is most appropriate for you? Let's do that one more time. Shift forward to plank. So if you're moving towards Chaturanga, you're going to keep your shoulders higher than your elbows. And what you don't want is your back to start to look like a hammock where you're sagging in the poses. So keep your belly engaged. Lower either Chaturanga or the floor. Upward dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. All right, right leg, lift it up to the sky. Take a big stretch. So take your toes, point them down to the ground. Reach your heel back. Keep your left knee soft. Good, now shift forward so your shoulders start to come over your wrist. Bend your right leg, cat pose, arch your back up, create space, and step your right foot. Do your best. Use your hand to help you if you need to. Find runner's lunge. So drop down in your hips. Take your right hip back in and down. Lift your head and shoulders. So again, top of your head all the way to that back heel. We feel that line of energy in our body. Nice, step backwards into downward facing dog. Left leg, so we're gonna inhale, lift the leg up. So again, toes to the ground. If you take a look back at your foot, often our foot is turned out to the side when we lift our leg. So work on pointing your big toe to the floor. You gotta engage your upper inner thigh to do that on your left leg. You also have to engage the outer thigh of your right leg to keep your hips square. Cat pose, so we're creating space. We lift our ribs way up as we shift forward so that we can step the foot right between our hand up by our left thumb. Hips come down, head and shoulders lift, squeeze your legs towards each other, find your runner's lunge. Now remember, if you don't have props at home like yoga blocks, you can always use a water bottle or something to prop your hands, pillows, blankets, games, whatever you have nearby. Books also make great blocks. This time, step forward. Let your head come down and fold. All right, as we come up, bend your knees, find your chair pose. Good. 
Good. So at any point, stay with that pose. At any point that it's too hard to leave your arms up, bring your hands to your heart. It's always an option in our yoga practice. If this is too much tonight, here's a great place to be. Good. So dropping into your chair pose, hips back. Can you see your big toes? If your knees are covering them, take your hips back more. Ribs, like you're knitting them together in front. Good. Straighten your legs and fold down, forward fold. Find your halfway lift, so reach your head out, extend out, nice long spine. Exhale, fold. <sighs> Finding a twist, so we're going to take our halfway lift. Take your left hand under your chin. You can be on, again, if you've got something for a prop or just on your fingertips. And then reach your right arm straight out to the side. Now plug your arm into the shoulder and then twist in your pose. Keep your head extended forward, your tailbone back, ribs and belly up and in. And then release, hand to the ground. Let's do the other side. So left arm comes out, plug your shoulder into your shoulder joint lengthen your spine and then find your twist does not matter if your fingers aren't straight up to the ceiling mine aren't even in this pose so just do what feels good in your shoulder and then releasing your hand down to the ground take a forward fold bend your knees softly and roll yourself up inhaling you come all the way up, bring your arms up, stretch, hands to your heart. Good. Let's move. So we're going to inhale, reach the arms, exhale, take a forward fold down. Halfway lift, inhale, bring your hands to the ground, step back into your plank pose. Exhale as you lower, inhale. Opening up, upper dog or cobra, elbows soft, and then roll back, downward dog. Right leg lifted up, toes down. Bend the knees, step right between your hands. This time, leave your back heel up, rise up into your crescent. So again, option, hands at your heart, or you can lift them up. Ribs back, hips square, front knee tracks straight forward. Inhale, another breath, and exhale, hands to the floor. Come on back into downward facing dog. Left leg, reach it up. Shift forward, cat pose to find space. Step the foot with your breath, rise up into your crescent. Ribs back, hips square. Back knee can be bent or you can straighten it. It really is gonna depend on your hamstring and what feels best for you. Full breath. And exhale, hands down to the ground. Find your downward facing dog. Reach back. At this point, you might wanna stay in downward dog or maybe drop down into child's pose and take a breather. Your practice, again, this up a little bit. All right, back into downward facing dog. Reach your hips up to the sky. Hands shoulder width apart. Stretch back. Right leg lifts. Bend your knees, step right between your hands. Inhale, rise up into your crescent. Good. 
Good, so let's find a twist here. Option, stay up and twist, or option to come down. So I usually take my hand right here in my thigh just for balance, so I can really pull my ribs back and get a deep twist as we come over into the pose. Right hip, it wants to follow you up. Instead, send it away. Send it in, under, back. Top hand comes on top of your left hand, and you're gonna take your right hand and push down so you can lift your ribs up. So we're not just hanging out here on the legs. We're extending. So let's come back to that visual. Top of your head, all the way down to your back heel. One long line of energy here. And then inhale, and you're gonna come out of your pose, take your hands to the ground, rotate your back heel on the ground, send your right arm forward, and play with opening up into half moon. Keeping your right leg slightly bent, so the leg is straight, but the knee's not locked. A little softness there, just to protect that joint. And releasing your hand down to the ground. Step on back into downward dog. Hips reach back. All right, we're gonna lift the left leg up to the ceiling. Step right between your hands. Find your balance by squeezing your legs together. Coming up into your crescent. And then twisting, either staying up in your twist or pull your ribs back and take a deeper twist by bringing your elbow to the outside of your left knee. Now once you get there, square your hips. Top hand pushes down to lift you up and twist. Again, line of energy from the top of your head all the way to that back heel. Good, take another breath. Exhale it out and rise up into your crescent. Let's come on and reach that left hand a little bit forward. Open into your half moon. And bending your left knee, taking your hands to the floor, step back into downward dog. And then right leg lifts up. Bend your knee, but we're not gonna step between our hands. Instead, we're gonna shoot that right leg over to the left. Roll to the inside of your left foot and stay here or lift up into fallen star. Take another breath and exhale, hand to the ground. Come back into plank. Exhale, lower either to the floor or chaturanga. Upward dog or cobra. Downward facing dog, roll back. Left leg reaches up, shift forward. And then start to bring the leg underneath over to the right side. Roll to the inside of your right foot. Stay here with both hands on the ground or shift and lift the right arm up. Fallen star, hold your pose, breathe. And then taking your hand back down to the ground into downward facing dog. Shift forward through plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga or the floor. Up here, up, sorry. Reach up, inhale, downward facing dog. I'm really tongue-tied tonight. 
<sighs> Shake your hips side to side. And walk your feet to the top of your mat and fold forward. Hips reach up, nice long stretch. Top of your head works to the ground. Feel a stretch in the back of your legs. If you want a little play here, take your hands shoulder width apart and roll up onto your toes. Lift your heels, putting some weight into your hands. So shoulders are in front of your wrists. Get in, really engage your belly, pull it up strong towards your spine. And just work on getting some weight in your hands. Too much, just stay in your regular forward fold. And roll your heels back down onto the ground. Bend your knees, and we're gonna come down into bija or seed pose. If this aggravates your knees to come this far down to the ground, feel free not to do that. You're gonna lay your belly on top of your thighs. Make yourself round here. If it's available, you can reach around, grab your heels, and really, if you hold on to your heels and give yourself a pull around your back behind you to give you an awesome back stretch. Now stay connected to your heels and see if you can start to straighten your legs. You may not be able to come all the way up, that's okay, but if you can, straighten up as far as you can go. We're working our arms to the back side. So one day, elbows touch behind our legs. One day, huh? And then release your hands. Take two steps back and find your downward dog. Let's lift the right leg up to the ceiling. On the exhale, step between your hands. This time, go ahead and let your left heel come onto the ground. Take a quick visual and see if your heels are lined up. We're gonna come straight up into warrior one. So again, hands can stay right at your heart, or if you wanna lift them up, that's fine. But make sure your hips are squared first. Front knee is bent, and you're putting some weight into your back heel. Hands either here, or if you wanna lift them up, if you want to arch, we're going to lift the arch between our shoulder blades to come back. Maybe bending that front knee a little bit deeper to get some more opening out of the left side. Good, and as you release, bring your hands down to the ground. We're going to just barely Brush that left hand out in front. Swing the right arm up and see if we can find revolved half moon. So in this pose, we're turning our chest to the right, taking our left toes so they point straight down to the ground. All right, start to bend your right leg. Left leg's gonna come back to the floor, heel on the ground, wind up into warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. Ah, deep breath as you sink into your pose. And then windmill your hands to the floor and find either downward dog or move through a vinyasa if you like. That just simply means to lower, do your push up and back into downward dog. Left leg reaches up, inhale. Exhale, step right between your hands. Put the right heel on the floor and again, just take a quick glance, make sure your feet are lined up. Bend your left knee, rise up. Virabhadrasana, A. So this heel works down to the ground. Working your ribs to the front, ribs back though. 
and finding Virabhadrasana one. So the whole time I'm in this pose, I'm working that right rib around, working the right shoulder square and keeping the belly back, rooting down through the heel. All right, so we're gonna take a nice brush to the floor, right hand on the ground, circle the left, and find revolved half moon. All right, bending your support leg, back foot onto the ground, wind up into warrior two. Virabhadrasana B. All right, left toes are turned straight out, right toes are turned in, and your heels further back than your toes. Bend your left knee, melt into your pose. Take an inhale, and on your exhale, hands to the floor. Downward dog or vinyasa. Big breath right here. Let's just pause for a moment to see how our practice is working for us tonight. And what I mean by that is where do you feel your practice in your body? If you're like, oh, I'm a little tired, come into child's pose. We're gonna take it to the floor in a moment, but take it through one more kind of active pose and then we'll come back down. All right, so downward dog, if you're not in that pose, lift the right leg up, shift forward, shoulders of your wrists, bend your right knee, and we're gonna take that leg and we're gonna bring our knee over to our left tricep muscle. Hold it there and then kick it back. Let's do that one more time. So come across your body, hold it right there, and back. And let's do the other side. So lift the left leg up. Shift forward. Left knee to right tricep, bicep. I guess it would be your tricep. <laughs> That'd be quite a, quite a feat to get that in front. Let's do the other side. Come down. Cross it over. And back. All right. Shift back to your right leg. Inhale, lift it up. Shift forward. This time, same leg, same arm. Hold it there. And kick it back. Switch feet. Left leg lifts. Left knee to the outside of the left arm. And back. And release. Walk your hands backwards towards your feet. And then open up your feet wider than your hips. Grab hold of your ankles. Give yourself a gentle pull and lean over. Shake out your head. And let your hips rock side to side. Halfway lift, and then turn your toes out, so away from each other, and drop down into yoga squat. If your knees bother you to do this, feel free not to come all the way into this pose. But if it feels okay to drop into yogi squat, go for it. This is a feel-good pose for me. It's one of my favorites. Hopefully it's one of yours. <laughs> All right, so you have some options here. We can play with crow balance. We just did a little bit of that core work to get us warmed up to do that balance. Or you can stay here. Or if you're like, yeah, I don't wanna do either one of those, just gonna sit on the floor and take Baddha Konasana. Okay, so if you wanna work through your crow balance, we'll go sideways. So you're low. I like to bring my feet a little closer together and then scoop underneath. So it's like I'm using the back of my arm to pick up my shins. 
So you, I like to get really far in front. Get my ribs through. And then hug elbows in so they're not flailing out. Wide fingers on the ground, so fingers spread wide. Pull your core up. Find cat pose. So I really think about arching my back up towards the ceiling. And then work on floating your leg off. So try not to lift your hips. Instead, stay level. Point of energy, crown of your head to your tailbone. Feel that energy line. Pull your belly up and in. And then have your feet maybe float off the floor. Keep your elbows pointing straight back so they don't flail out. Stay with it if you can. And release. Walk your hands out, flip your palms up, and just relax through the middle. We're gonna do it again, but I wanna give you a little break on your wrists. So we're gonna do crow balance, but nothing behind you if you wanna play with working your float back. So spread your fingers, come into your crow. So if we're working on floating back to chaturanga, we gotta really engage the belly, pull it up and in to shoot the legs back. Let's give it a shot. I'll talk you through it again. So come back into your crow pose, engage your belly, and think of, there's almost like a lift. It's like you're lifting the legs up and then back into the pose. Try to control it so you're not just letting your legs fly back, but you're in control. You're shooting the legs back with control. Really using the muscles in your arms to do that. Give another round of play. If you're like, yeah, I'm done with that, <laughs> no worries. Come on down into child's pose. If you wanna play one more time with that shoot back, go for it. All right, so let's all come into downward dog. Lift the right leg up and then send it between, but this time knee to the floor. Feel good pose, pigeon. Everybody loves this pose. Ah, work yourself side to side and then lower into your resting pigeon. And then you can lift yourself up through downward dog just to change legs, or you can swing that back leg around if you'd prefer. I'm gonna switch to the left side, finding our resting pigeon, and walk it out. Ah, deep breath as you settle down onto the floor, giving your left hips some much needed love in this pose. So we're going to come onto our backs. Any way you'd like to get there, you can do downward dog to even out your sides. Or if you just want to swing your back leg around, that's great too. We're going to come down onto our backs. Hug your knees in. All right, let's work through bridge pose. So we're going to put our feet on the floor. And you're going to line up your heels with your hips. And one way you can tell is if you just bring your hands along the side of your body, you should feel with your fingertips the outside of your heels. Probably the most common thing I see when I'm teaching this in a group class is people's feet are wider than your hips. So make sure that you have good alignment here. And then you want your knees to sit right over your heels. Oftentimes people's feet are too far out in this pose or too close in 
and your knees go too far forward. So think again, where's my knees? And I want my heels to be right underneath them. All right, hugging your legs towards each other, but not knocking your knees in. It's again, energetically pulling your legs towards each other. Push down through your heels to roll your hips off the floor. Good, so send your knees forward. Lift up through your hips, but try not to squeeze your butt muscles super tight. Again, think of pushing down through your heels, sending your knees forward. And then we're trying to lift our chest up to our chin, not our chin down to our chest. So keep some space between your chest and your chin. If you want to come higher, you can take your hands underneath your back. Bring one shoulder underneath and then the other shoulder and then lift a little higher up. Reach your chin up. Now there's an option if you want to lift one leg up to the ceiling. And then we'll switch to the other side. So lower the leg and press down through your heels, hips up. And then the other side comes up. And release. Both heels on the ground and lift. Good, release your hands. Lift up onto your toes so you can really roll your back onto the floor. Walk your feet wider than your hips and let your knees knock in towards each other for a moment. All right, so we're gonna repeat that same. Those of you who wanna take a wheel pose, I'll talk you through that one time through. So you can stay with the pose that we just did or if you want to work towards that full back bend, setup's pretty much the same, heels underneath your hips, but you're gonna bring your hands up around your shoulders. So I like to take this pose in stages. Sure, we could just push and go straight up, but I feel that it fit, it's nicer for our back if we just take that in stages. So the first stage we're gonna take is to bring our head to the top of the mat. So we're gonna push down through our hands and feet and lift up. You're taking your head on the mat. Good, now walk your hands back about a half an inch towards your shoulders. Hug your elbows in, plug your shoulders in to your shoulder joint. Good, hug your legs energetically towards each other. Push your hands into the ground and lift up into your back bend. Good. Make sure you don't crank your head. Just let your head hang here. Be gentle on your neck. Knees are going forward, pressing your heels into the floor, opening your chest. For most of us, we need to push our heels more to bring our chest forward more to get more opening into that back bend. Another inhale. Exhale, come up on your toes, just a little nicer. Bend your knees, tuck your chin, and lower down onto the ground. Soles your feet together, knees open wide, Supta Baddha Konasana. Relax your back. Nice, and we're gonna come into a twist. So option one is just to let your knees come over to one side. If you want a deeper twist, you're gonna go ahead and cross your right leg over your left. You can double or single cross your leg, so if you can get your foot around your ankle, go for it. And then we're gonna let those knees come over to the left side. Right shoulder on the ground, and maybe even turn your head to the right. Feel that nice stretch. So think in terms of moving your right hip away from your body. So you're again, lengthening along your upper rib cage. So you can even take your hand and just gently push your hip away. That should give you some more stretch. 
But again, think of really lengthening along this rib cage. And then as we come out of our pose, you can uncross your legs if you cross them. We'll do the other side, wrapping the left leg over if you like. Double or single cross, legs go over to the right side. And then you might notice that your left shoulder starts to pop off the ground. So bring yourself back, even if your legs don't go as deep, that's fine. Full deep breath. And again, work your hip away from your shoulder. So lengthen this top rib cage. And then we'll come back into the center. And bring the soles of your feet together. Hug your feet in towards your belly. Let your back release onto the floor. And then open up your feet. Pull on one leg and then the other leg, so rock side to side, massaging your hips and your low back. And then let's do that rocking motion forward and back again. So bring your knees together and rock forward and back. And then rock all the way up seated position. Let's finish tonight with some seated meditation and then we'll go into our Shavasana. So find a comfortable seat. I'm going to change this to a more meditative sound. That's not. That's better. Oh, grab my notes. All right, so you're going to come into a seated position. Again, you can sit on a blanket or a pillow. Move my mic pack out of the way. <sighs> Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Get in touch with our practice tonight. Where did you feel the practice open your body? Where do you feel the energy moving in your body? Tonight, we're going to focus our meditation on the Sanskrit mantra, Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. And I don't know, for some reason, that's, there's lots of different mantras, hundreds probably of different mantras. That one always has resonated with me. Um, and when I first heard it, uh, Deva Pramal, one of her songs, her yoga songs, singing it and I just ah oh, I just really loved that. I had no idea what it meant, but I just liked the vibration of it and how it made me feel. And then after much study and research, you know, to come to really understand what Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu means. It's really about first self love. We have to love ourselves we have to accept ourselves for who we are, what we look like, <laughs> you know, what we can and cannot do, our limitations and our gifts. We love ourselves so that we can move beyond that. And that's really what this mantra, at least to me, says. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere have peace and happiness. And may we contribute to that peace and happiness through our words and through our actions. May we be co-creators of peace. So Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu is about first loving ourselves, accepting ourselves, forgiving ourselves, 
so that we can be free to move beyond ourselves, to go beyond the ego self, I'm the most important, to your importance. So loka samasta sukino bhavantu, may all, all beings, every person on this planet, every breathing animal, every living creature, plants, the air, Mother Earth, may all know peace and happiness. And may we contribute to that peace. May we say kind words. May we someday soon embrace one another with a loving hug. And we send out positive energy. And sometimes we probably feel like, well, that doesn't really make a difference. I mean, I'm just here in my basement sending out love. But collectively, science has shown that that's not true. Collectively, we can make a difference even with just positive thinking. And that shapes who we are. And again, once we can be people of peace ourselves, accept ourselves, then we can go out and share that peace with others. Then we can contribute to bringing peace. Our yoga practice helps us to be more self-aware, to recognize those areas where we need growth physically in our bodies through our various poses, but also emotionally and mentally, spiritually. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May we contribute to peace. May we contribute to the wellness, the well being of all of those around us. And with all Sanskrit mantras, it's just that vibration through us. That helps to heal us. So let the sound of the mantra vibrate through yourself tonight. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. We are all connected. We are all connected. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all know peace and may our words, thoughts, and actions contribute to that peace in some way. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Please feel free to stay in your evening Shavasana for as long as your body is calling you to stay there. I really appreciate you coming to practice with me. Um, I hope to see you on Thursday night. Feel free to invite your friends. On behalf of Sunwater, Sunwater Spa, my name is Susan Searle, and it's been my honor to be with you tonight. May you have peace. Namaste. Hello, Yogi. Says bye. <laughs> Have a great night.